there was a sequel to that, but then didn't you move him into working yes. for... Yes, that's, that's the thing. The third and fourth books about Chip Harrison are mysteries. Right. And uh, the, in those, he's uh, employed by a sort of road company, Nero Wolf. Um, as Archie? Yes, as, okay. a, as, a, as, a, as, a, as Leo Haig's eyes, ears, nose, and throat, as, uh, as he describes himself occasionally. And, uh, and th those were, were great fun to, to write. I was uh, always a, uh, an enormous fan of uh, Rick Stout's books. Me too. Yeah, so I, so I had fun with, uh, with those. But I, I doubt that there will be any more books about Chip Harrison, there, though every once in a while I do, do manage a short story. Well, they are really fun. The series that I first got to know you in was really your Bernie Rodenberg mm -hmm. series. And that one, I think it was Burglars Can't Be Choosers was the first That book. was the first, yes. And I can't remember. I wrote a little cheat sheet here. 1997, 1977, sorry. That sounds was, right, 77. Um, Burglars Can't Be mm -hmm. Choosers. And you wrote, what, four or five of them? I think. I wrote five of them. Then I didn't write any for about 11 years. And then I've since written three or four more. Right. You came back with the burglar um, who what traded, is, traded Ted traded Williams, Ted Williams yeah. in 1994. Yes. And that was a huge hit. Yeah. Really caught. Yeah. Um, yeah. I, I don't know whether it was the baseball thing or whether everybody was just happy to see Bernie again or what, but it really sold brilliantly. Yeah, I guess uh, I guess they were pleased to have him back. Uh, everyone, uh, you know, that was, that was, as you know, that was the question I would always get at signings is, uh, are you ever going to write another book about uh, Bernie? And I'd never see what people don't seem to get is that I never know what I'm going to do next. Huh. And I, I don't understand how people can know that. Um, I don't know in life itself. Why, why should I know in, in the work? So I, I can have the strong suspicion that I will or will not write about something, but I, I can never have the certainty. I remember when Sue Grafton, very early in, in the game, said that she was going to write 26 books about Kinsey Milhan. And I thought, how can she know? You know, How can she know she'll, she'll be able to? How can she know it won't just go dead for her? Or she won't, be, she'll, won't find herself unable to stand it? Well, there, it's hard to know. It is, but you're comfortable with uncertainty because you, you have the ability to create um, more easily than many people. Here's me, the pop psychologist, but I really do think that because you're so creative, you can deal with uncertainty comfortably because you can make things certain as you need to, but lots of people can't do that. I, Sharon McCrum is like that in, in that respect. I have talked to Sharon quite a lot, and in fact, we did um, a program with her. She is a person who, if she lives to be a thousand, will never tell all the stories that bubble up out of mm -hmm. her to tell. I mean, she throws away storylines talking to people. And yet, I've talked to other writers who live in fear that they're not going to come up with the next plot for next year's book. Well, sure, I live in fear of that, of that uh, too. You know, you, you don't know. But, but you at least have finished so many that you must have some confidence that somehow it's going to happen. Yeah. Uh, well, I, I figure if it doesn't happen, something else will. But um, I also figure that worrying about it is is going to help. But uh, it never does. But um, I don't. Um, I don't find it possible to control a lot of uh, a lot of this. I can't say, yes, I, I know for sure I'll be able to write another book about uh, Bernie. Maybe I won't. Well, thank God you did, because they've really yeah. been fun. And yeah. the other thing I think is really helpful is because Ted Williams did so well, or maybe it was always in the plan, I have no way to know that, the early books that were out of print for so long have all been reprinted. Yes. And in fact, somewhere in here, I think we have here the burglar who thought he was Bogart. And there's the burglar who traded Ted Williams, which mm -hmm. was the 1994 one. There's Tanner on ice. That was Tanner. But didn't I give you maybe earlier? There's a, I have a reading copy of the right. burglar who painted Right, London. that'll be out in a month or two in right. uh, a hardcover reissue. It was a plan from the, the beginning to bring back the, uh, the early burglar books in, in paperback. But uh, people had got Dutton just uh, realized that the enthusiasm for the books was considerable and that uh, the uh, 
hardcover copies of the early ones were, were not available anywhere, and they had a feeling that, uh, that the books uh, reissued in hardcover would, would find an audience, and they did. They've, uh, they've all done well. Oh, they have? Not as well as the new, uh, the brand new books, but, uh, but well enough so that, uh, so that they're doing a lot. And uh, uh, the only one still unpublished is The Burglar Who Painted Like Mondrian. So we'll have them all. Yes. Then. That'll mm -hmm. be wonderful. And it does, I think, illustrate the fact that while people do like to consider social issues and so forth, when they read crime fiction, they still like to be entertained. Sure. It's really, you know, sure. it, 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 it's fun just to, mm -hmm. to escape into Bernie's world, you know, and, and enjoy with him. Whatever. I should I should say that, that um, the burglar books are the uh, toughest and uh, most unpleasant to write. Unpleasant how? Because... I'm convinced while I'm writing them that they're terrible and that they're not going to work out. So it's, un it's unpleasant for you. That's even. right. Okay. That's right. Unpleasant yeah. to write. I tr hope they're pleasant to read. And well, they I hope are. Not, I hope none of this is evident in, in, in the books, but, but they're, uh, they're uh, much, much more difficult. I think yes. because it's a puzzle mystery and it has to have the illusion that it, at least that it makes sense. It has to have an end as good as its beginning and yeah, all that. Yeah, it, it has to dovetail it has to, has to mesh and uh, as I'm writing it you know I, I don't know how it's going to work out and, uh, and I'm convinced it isn't well they certainly didn't read as though you have labored hard Good. over them Good. they read excellently well but they read as though you had as much fun writing them as we have reading them Larry one thing that you do do superbly well uh, among all the things you do superbly well is short stories and not every writer has that facility either you've won a lot of awards for your shorts you know your short fiction I've heard you read it which mm -hmm. you do well um, how is it different to write a short story for example you're done sooner Okay. And that, that's one of the great, great delights of it. Uh, I, I really like writing short stories because they're about as close as this business comes to instant gratification. It's possible to have the whole idea of a story in mind. I can't do that with a novel. Mm. Yeah, and it's possible to write a short story at one setting, although I don't always by, by any means, but it's, it's possible to. It's not possible with a novel, not, not even with all the amphetamine uh, in, uh, in, in all the Hells Angel labs in all the country. It's not possible to write it in one setting. Uh, so uh, it's, uh, it's, much, uh, it's a much more, you can get your mind around the whole story. Um, and you, uh, a novel is always, to one extent or another, even the ones that are, are fun to write and where it, where it goes well, there is something of uh, trench warfare about the writing of a novel. Uh, and also, uh, another nice thing about short stories is there are both kinds of themes, kinds of characters, kinds of settings that I wouldn't be tempted to sus try to sustain for 60 or 80,000 words that um, I can uh, do effectively and enjoyably uh, at a tenth that length. It's fascinating yeah. to me that some writers can embrace both forms and some really don't seem to be able to. I mean, many people who enjoy writing novels are just panicked over short stories. Right, or, and, or and, and some people are only comfortable writing short stories. Ed Hoke, of course, who's, right. who's mm -hmm. written uh, two short stories a month for years now, and, and often more than that. Uh, he has written one or two novels, but it's it's not a form he feels at ease in. And uh, short stories, uh, I'm sure they're not effortless for him. None of the stuff is it, uh, that any of us does is, is uh, as effortless as we hope it looks, but it, short stories certainly is a form that he's uh, relatively at ease with. And it does give you an opportunity to bang off all kinds of subjects and people and so forth, exactly. you know, exactly. um, than a novel because of the much yeah. greater time yeah. and scope. And, and, uh, and if it doesn't work and you wind up tearing it up, you've lost a couple of days instead of a few months. And that, that makes one a little more eager to experiment. You know, something I meant to ask you, um, I, w I was going to ask you to conclude our interview today by reading something because I think you have a superb reading style. Always wonderful. Thank you. Uh, but I've, I've been meaning to ask you about Bernie. Am I right in remembering there is a Bernie Rodenbar bench behind the New York Public Library? There certainly is, and a Matthew Scudder bench as well. Oh, there is? Yes. Ah, 